Hello and welcome to the first ever live premiere viewing of the QLC Season 2 Challenger League. My name is Starwise and I'll be your host and caster for today's games. As we begin today's event, I want to give a huge shout out to all the Challenger League players who get to play and be a part of this new YouTube experience, and especially you the viewers. Today's match will consist of three games, which you may already see on screen now. Game number one is going to be Riken27 vs Hap818. Game number two is going to be Remix vs 306832008 quadruple zero, otherwise known as numbers in today's broadcast. And game number three, Riken27 once again vs Shalka. Before we begin our matches today, I want to give a big thank you to our sponsors for season two, Quantum League and Level GG. Quantum League is a game you all know and love to play, of course, and Level GG is the event hosting platform with all the tools you need to host your tone tournaments. And now for the first time in QLC history, I get to say, if you enjoy today's content, smash that like and subscribe button for more content and leave a comment for which game you enjoyed the most today. Guys, I'm officially a YouTuber here now. And now, let's get into our first game of the day, Riken vs. Hap. We're here with Hap vs. Riken in our first match of the day. And how exciting is this? Challenger League Week 1, Day 1. Are you ready, folks? Are you ready, folks? I can't wait to see how these two players play. Riken has competed and played in many different leagues in the past, and he is a very strong showing. Hap is a new and up-and-coming player as well, so it's great to see how exactly Hap is going to match up to Riken. Now they're going to make their push here. Riken no. is going to be able to land his shots, get the kill, and get that loop one advantage. Now, both players playing Bjarn, obviously we're going to see the exact same scenario happen on both sides, so not a lot of differenti differentiation. Oh my god, I can't even English. Not a lot of different strats coming in from both sides, however... Right now, if they're able to get a little bit more damage out on one way or the other, they're going to be able to spot out using those wall hack abilities that the Arn is able to provide. But this time around, Hap is able to get the loop to advantage. Let's see what happens when Riken turns this around. Or is he even able to? Loop number three. Right now, more advantage is going in the way of Hap. Riken is able to get, get some significant damage and even take down Hap. He did pick up the health pack here, but Riken's going to rush over for a steal on the health pack. But there's only 1.5 seconds left. He's going to be able to make his push and take down Hap's clone 3, 1 and 2. And that's going to give Riken the first point of the game. Now, that was a very well played out strategy here. Riken knew he had to take down that clone 2. It was very crucial. He had the time to do so, at least do some significant damage over it. In the process of that, taking down his clone 3, or for Hap's clone 3 as well. That allowed him to turn the tides back in his favor, and then all he had to do was go with a distraction tactic. It paid off heavily, and oh, and suddenly, Riken running an invisibility strat. So he goes for a two health back steal into an invisibility strat. Let's see how Hap responds. A lot of players, they are typically well adverse in dealing with it. Usually you would have to shoot that barrel sooner rather than later. Doesn't look like he's going to do that anytime soon. But he is going to be able to... Oh no! He's not going to be able to get the health pack to get back into the action. He takes down Riken's clone 2. But on the way back, the clone 1 from Riken actually steals the health pack away. Right now, this is looking like it's going to be Riken's round. I can't really see Hat getting back too much from this. They have to be able to shoot down that barrel. At least Riken should be able to do, but if he's not careful, he could end up dying before it's too late. Got a split second left. Barrel is going to go off and still take down that clone one. Looks like Riken had a little bit of a misplay. He's still going to survive, but not for much longer as Hap turns it around and gets that first kill. Or first point. Now, it was pretty well set up by Riken. He had everything going. He had to have cleaned up that barrel before it... Or it destroyed his clone one. At least it would have been a little bit more of a distraction for him. For against Hap to make his way to the point. But Riken ended up getting a health pack stolen away from himself. And that put him at a huge disadvantage. Because that two health pack steal from Hap and from Riken. Both made it so that whoever got taken down first would have the biggest disadvantage. And it just so happened to be Riken. Now coming into loop number two. Let's see Hap. And spot out Riken here. Riken's gonna go for a health pack steal back, but 
Capricorn 1 is going to be able to steal it. He got two seconds left, and it looks like he's not going to be able to make his way to the point. It's going to be Hap with a huge advantage coming into loop number two towards loop number three. Now I want to say Hap is more favored to win it, unless a little bit of a misplay comes in. I can't see anything different otherwise. Loop, the, the clone two for Riken all in the steal. Not going to make it back in time. Has little to no health. Here's Riken and Hap. They're going to make their push. Riken getting brought down low. Might get taken out. Yes, he does. And that's going to be Hap getting his second point. Now, not a whole lot of differentiating strategies. We finally got that word. But Riken just basically losing an all out right fire fest here. Eyes. Now, Riken is able to win that second trade off and the push over to the midpoint. However, he doesn't really need to win it as much as well. All he's going to do is steal that either the first or second health pack. More importantly, the second health pack on the left side that Hap steals, and that's going to guarantee that that clone gets taken down. Riken trying to go for a steal again, not going to be able to make it in time. He is going to make it in time back for his own health pack. Make a push, three seconds left on the clock. Is he going to be able to take down Hap's clone 2? I believe he will. Between no, he eyes. won't. Hap's clone 2 is actually going to survive and take down Riken's clone 2. And in the process, Riken's not going to actually get on top of the point. Hap looking more and more favored to win this. He's got one more point and he's going to take home this first game victory. He's on the hunt. He wants to hunt down Riken's clone 3. If he's able to keep him distracted long enough, that's going to ensure his victory. Here comes the push. There goes the clone one. The clone three is able to get on top of the point, and that's going to bring into overtime. Now, the problem with this is the fact that Riken has little to no health, and there's one health pack up. You can see it on the side. Riken's actually going to go for a pre fire shot as he believes that Hap most likely will run for that. But at the same time, you have to remember is Riken going to be running for that or not? That last B hop to get him on top of the point. So the clone two for Hap gonna respawn off of the point, but Riken's gonna respawn with half health on top of the point, make his rush. He's gonna pre fire on himself. He still gets the health back, still gets away with full HP. So Riken's not in too bad of a position. However, the clone three is what's more important. He might have actually stole this away from his clone three. He's able to get the clone one and the clone two. And the clone one getting on top of a point for Riken is gonna be huge. This could bring it into another overtime if Hap is not able to successfully take down Riken's clones. Ooh, Hap's on top of the point with no health. Who's going to be able to win it? There goes the blast from the past. Who's going to be able to make it in time? It's actually going to be Hap. Hap with the full HP. Riken's got little to none, and now he gets taken down. The clone three taken down. Now the clone two and clone one are the only ones left. Clone two is going to get taken down. It's up to Riken's clone one to make it safe on top of the point, but that's not what's going to happen here. It's going to be Hap who's going to secure the first game victory. Very well played. Hap executed his B hops phenomenally well on point and beat Riken's clone two and clone three to that health pack. Look at each other, staring each other down just seconds before Hap gains victory over Riken.
Welcome back to game number two, and that's going to be Riken versus Hap. Currently, Hap is leading with a 1-0 lead. Here we because go. it is a best of five, Hap has to win two more games, inclu including this one, if he wants to get that match victory. But Riken looking to make a comeback here. He sees the two health pack steal and goes for a counter steal of his own. He does get taken down in the process here, so Hap's going to be one that takes that loop one advantage. However, that advantage may not hold so well because Riken, all he got to do to counteract that play and keep his clone one alive is steal the health pack on his right side here. Take down the clone one before it takes down his clone one. And that'll be it. See here already, he's going to make his push. Take down the clone one, but get heavily rained down on fire from that clone two. Riken's going to go in for the ramps here, but Hap is going to come in from the back. Riken doesn't ha know exactly where Hap is, but he's going to be able to spot him out just in time, take him down, and Hap's not actually going to get on top of the point. In terms of positioning and strategy right now, Riken's looking more favored to print it. But Hap still has a chance. He's going to get the health pack stolen away. Now Hap is in a very dangerous position on his own. Gonna get fired on. Riken's gonna make his push. Managed to take down Hap's clone three and the clone two. That's gonna secure Riken's first point. Hap had a good idea. He wanted to go for a more aggressive strategy. However, he had to have played that very, very differently because all of the clones so far in the game revolved around these two health packs on over on Riken's side. So Riken all had to do was put himself in a pretty prime position to get some good covering fire take down Hap and that's exactly what happened now right here again Hap overextending that clone one if he wanted to go for a two health pack steal he needed to at least run back to his own health pack grab that and then go back for the push that's gonna allow that clone to survive a little bit longer for the clone one at least there goes the clone one and the clone two for Riken is gonna get taken down as well now Right, Hap's clone 2 is extremely overextended. The one downside or one upside in this case for Hap is the fact that there's a lot of pressure onto the enemy or on Riken's side health packs and they get picked up early on. Hap still has his, so Hap could play defensively, but it looks like Ryan Riken's gonna play very defensively over on the ramps. That's gonna give him some good positioning, good cover. He's gonna explode the barrel. That's gonna take down Hap's clone three. Now Hap has to rush towards his own health pack, pick it back up, and here comes the push from Hap, but Hap's gonna get taken down. Riken's gonna get secure a second point. Extremely well played by Riken. He knew the dangers of revolving and playing around that lower side health pack because, I mean, two clones picked it up at different times. It's extremely difficult to pick that up because you'd have to pick it up much, much earlier when it's not really needed. And then you're just going to get fired on and then there's no more health packs near you. So Riken playing ramps, got hit a cover that his clone needed to allow him that second point victory. Now, looking at this first loop, Riken was able to get on top of things. He was able to secure that first loop advantage. And now he's going to, Hap's going to play ramps, but so is Riken. So they're not going to really see each other. Riken's just waiting for that clone one. A little bit of damage here. Not able to spot him out here, but Hap's actually able to get a better angle. However, Hap, Hap decided to go for the health pack, and with not enough time left, he's not going to get on top of the point. Riken is looking heavily favored to win this next loot. Here comes the ramp play. Riken's going to follow his clone two. And now he spots out the clone three. He's going to steal the health pack away from Hap. Hap. Hesitating a little bit, runs back to his own health pack, takes it back up, gets back into the action. Here comes Riken with a push. He might get taken down. The denying coming in, and Riken's actually going to be able to get taken down. And that's Hap going to get his first point of the game in an amazing turnaround of events. I thought Hap would get taken down, and it would be over right there. Right when he got taken down, I had to rush towards his back health pack. That allowed Riken's clones to do what they did in the previous loop and gain Riken an even bigger advantage. But Hap was able to land all of his shots so precisely, so cleanly, that it ga gained him back his favor and allowed him to take that loop. Now, Hap, Hap has a habit of running at the last two seconds. I'm extremely impressed with the fact that he's able to get on point pretty much every time. Most players, when they play with a, just a, a two seconds left, it's not enough time. They fall a little bit short. Not the case here. 
Anakin coming in from the ramps. Gonna get spotted out from Hap, but Hap has a very easily predictable falling pattern, and Riken's gonna be able to get on top of the point and take down Hap. Riken looking strong, loop number three again, but if we see it in the past, it may go back in Hap's favor. Hap has been known to turn this around and when it comes to an aim battle, which is typically what Riken has been forcing out. Right now, Hap is going to get the advantage and take down, almost take down Riken's clone three. Riken's going to get taken down. He picks up the health pack. Here comes the push. Is he able to take down enough of clones? Yes, he will. And that's going to be Riken bringing this game to a, his first victory, bringing us to one to one in match score. With Hap taking down Riken here, Riken had every chance to lose it here, but he waited just long enough for the clone to do their work and then make his push, and that allowed Riken to just full, fully focus on the clone 3. Meanwhile, even if Hap won the loop here and took down the clone 3, he still had to focus on the clone 1 and clone 2. It would have brought him to overtime. Riken set this up very beautifully. Game number three, and it is intense. Riken versus Hap. Both players not giving any leeway in their games. Riken going to take the second game. Hap going to take the first, bringing us one to one. Now, both players need to go, need to win two more games in order to win their match series. And that's going to be the best of five as well. Hap now realizing that change in strategy actually where is he going? It looked like he was going to go run for that back health pack, but deciding to opt for not picking it up instead. That's going to leave his clone one extremely vulnerable. And the reason why is because just as we've been seeing, typically the two health pack strategy is easily countered because all you got to do is take down the one clone at the, at the beginning here, as you can see Riken doing. Pick up the health pack, and now that clone's gone. And the second health pack is to just ensure a little bit more pressure on that opponent's side. But right that's not what's going to happen now. The clone one's going to get taken down, and Riken doesn't have to worry or stress about that other health pack pickup. Although he did pick it up with his clone one, slowly sneaked in, it looked like. Riken's looking more favored to win it. He's got a little bit more of an advantage coming into this loop. Got to spot up the clone two. The clone two did get that health pack steal. Going uh, to keep his clone one alive as well. Be careful here, Riken's gonna make his push, he's gonna spot out Hap's clone 3, it's the only clone left alive, but there's three Riken clones extended. making their way to the point, and that's gonna be a time extension, bringing us to overtime. Now, there's two health packs over on Hap's side, it looks like Riken's gonna be able to secure one, but a little bit of pressure, that Riken clone 1 extremely, extremely overextended as well, because most, some of Hap's clones are gonna spawn over at the enemy base. Actually, it looks like the clone... The clone 3 is going to spawn over center point. Clone 2 is going to spawn at half space. And that's going to be able to take down Riken's clone 1. Ooh, but the clone 2... I'm going to run to that other health pack here. He has the time. He has the energy. But no, he's going to opt for running back for safety instead. 
Now looking over at Hap, he has full vision of that clone one. Is going to be able to secure that kill. Here comes the push. Riken gets the kill onto the clone one, but quickly gets taken down by Hap's clone two. It's looking like it could go in favor of Hap. He's got the positioning of that health pack that he can take back at his home base. And Riken has little to no health. He is farther away from it. It could be a base race for it. Gonna be able to make it first. Hap is gonna be able to get there first as Riken focuses on trying to take him down. But he's gotta be careful. He could get taken down again, and that's gonna be Riken stealing the fate in this game as Hap is able to clear not one, not two, but three clones from Riken, getting the first point of the game. Riken had a good idea around it. I think if he wanted to successfully go for it, he had to have ran there with his clone too. He would have at least had two chances to try to take him down. And then if he wanted to focus on trying to take down Hap before he gets to the health pack, he would have been successfully able to do so. Nailed it. Riken able to take down that clone one. And he doesn't even need to run for that other health pack. Looks like they're just going to go for an all-out firefight. Riken's going to end up coming out on top. And Riken's going to come out strategically on top as well as, again... Hap is overextending on these health pack steals, and Riken doesn't even need to bother him. Now he knows that all he's going to do is start to kind of move towards it, and Hap is going to back off. So here comes the push from Riken. He's able to get that health pack steal, but again, Hap trying to sacrifice this clone 2 out of future loop. He gets the kill into the clone 1 and clone 2 for Riken, but at the cost of throwing away his clone 1 and clone 2. Now, if Riken wants to play this very successfully, very well, He's got to play probably around this left side here as he takes down Hap's clone too. And then maybe make an aggressive push for his health pack steal. Let's see how this plays out. He spots out the clone too. Gets the health pack. Takes it away from that clone too as well. And now he's in prime position to get that clone three as well. He blows up the barrel. Now he Hap has to deal with three different clones firing his way. And it's too much for him to handle. That's going to be Riken getting his first point. Exactly well played out by Riken. That's exactly what he needed to do. I mean, he, he took down the clone 2. He took down the clone 1 in good, proper fashion. And then all I had to do was just zone out that clone 3, steal that other health pack, and leave it at that. Gonna go for a 2 health pack steal. And that's a little bit of a better play. He goes for a health pack steal on his home base. Riken has to focus some efforts to try to take down that clone 1. But the health pack is going to get taken back from Hap's own base. And that's going to keep that clone one alive that much longer. And here comes Hap. Maybe with another two health pack steal. Ooh, he's getting some good pre-fire action in as well. Spots out the clone one. He's not going to go for a two health pack steal. So now this clone two is going to be extremely overextended. Just like in the previous round. Now it looks like Riken went for a two health pack steal loop number two. So all the health packs are going to be gone by the end of this loop. So it really depends on how they're going to play out. If it goes into overtime, this could be dangerous. Riken's going to play very defensively. Just try to fire on whoever he can. Here comes this push. He spots out the clone three. The clone three gets taken down. The clone two gets taken down. The clone one gets taken down. And that's going to be Riken getting a second point in game number three. Riken's use of the ramps here is pretty well well played. I mean, in a part of the game where all the health packs are heavily revolved around, especially on Riken's side, he knew that he had to play very defensively around the ramps, gives himself some good cover, and fire on whatever clone he can, especially when his previous clones came out on top. Nailed it! Loop number one, Riken gonna come out on top again. Now let's see what Hap has to answer. He's, he's been running the same strategy of health pack steal. He's finally changed it up. He's gone for a, a barrier to barrier play. So it looks like he wants to go for another health pack steal. So pre firing action is going to be a little bit good here. Riken goes for a two health pack steal. Meanwhile, Hap only goes for the one. And Hap might come out on top in this round. He manages to whack Riken's clone two off the point. But his clone one not going to survive much longer. Riken. One more point will get him this game victory, bring him 2-1 and one in that series. He's going to get fired on and almost taken down by Hap's Clone 3. He brings down Hap's Clone 3 pretty low, but the Clone 2 already stealing some health pack away. But the health pack is still going to get taken by Hap, and Hap is going to be able to take down all the clones from Riken. Bring us back into the game, potentially a reverse 2-2 two to two in terms of points for this game. Riken had a good, good idea around it here. 
you got the health pack to get himself back into the action. He played it very well. He just had to had finished off the job. He wasn't able to take down that clone three when it mattered, and then it came back to bite him, and Hap came out on top. Hap gonna focus more on trying to take down Riken's clone one after picking up the health pack steal. Still gonna be a very heavily countered strategy. Most of the fights happen to be over on Riken's side. It seems like Hap wants to go for a very aggressive, very pressuring plays that can easily be uh, counterplayed and then focus down the clone three while he's distracted with all the other clones. It seems to be working out just a little bit. Riken's gonna make his push. He spots with the clone two. His clone one gets taken down, so does Hap. And now they're gonna make the whack. Not enough damage from both sides. But both players' clone twos are gonna survive on top of the point. I don't know, this one could go either way. It's all or nothing. Riken's going for a heavily aggressive push. Manages to bring down Hap and almost take him down, but Hap is forced to pick up the health pack. Here comes Riken, he's gonna pick up and get health pack, get back into the action, full HP, might take down Hap's clone three, and he will be able to survive, but so will Hap's clone as well. This is gonna bring us to overtime, and this is gonna be a huge, huge, huge disadvantage for Riken. His clone three and clone two are gonna spawn on top of the point. And what's even more devastating is the clone three for Riken is gonna spawn on top of the point with little to no health. I, one shot, maybe even a pre-fire shot, is going to be all it takes. Riken wants to be able to successfully take back this point. He's got to go for a defensive play and keep his clones alive. At least try to bring him to another second overtime. It is possible he is going to take down the clone 2. That's going to help drastically. Now he needs to keep the clone 1, clone 2 defensively. That's exactly what we can see here. That's going to help with survivability in the next loop. And then when or if the clone three dies Headshot. then they'll be able to Amazing. you'll be able to bring into the next overtime i don't know if that's gonna happen it's very likely that it won't i mean look at this hp he's got seven hp that's gonna be one shot that's all he needs to get taken down and it's very highly likely he could get even pre-fired by his own himself he manages to make an escape but not at the very last turn around hap's gonna be able to take down riken's clone three there goes the clone two and the clone one not destined to live much longer as he gets taken down. That's going to be Hap taking down this next game, bringing us two to one in favor of Hap. Riken almost making a getaway here. You can see he just turned that corner and Hap was able to spot him out and take him down at the very end. And that cost him that game. Game number four, and Hap is leading two to one. Riken could get taken down at any moment. All it takes is this one game for Hap to win, and he's going to win the entire series. Riken still has a little bit of way to go. He has to win the next two games if he wants to make a comeback. But let's see how this 
game is going to play out. App, true to his standard fashion, going to go for a health pack steal and a health pack pickup on his own side. Going to spot out Riken, make his push, and get the loop one advantage. Now, what's been making Hap strong in these games is, ideally, I mean, you want to go for a, a two health pack steal, keep that clone one alive, but he's just deciding to opt for not going on that. He just wants to put a lot of pressure on Riken and then play aggressively on his side, forcing Riken to play very defensively and leave it at that. And then from then on, he's got two health packs on his side. If it goes into overtime, it goes into overtime. He's got two readily to use health packs. And Riken hasn't been able to capitalize as much as he hoped onto those health pack steals. Now here comes the push. Hap's gonna spot out Riken's clone three. They're gonna play aggressively again. There goes Riken's Riken's health packs. Hap's gonna get the health pack as well. No health packs alive or uh, available for any player, but the clone three are gonna get taken down. Who's still alive? It's Hap's clone two, giving him the first point. This fight really came down to how the clone twos were taken down first, and then it just became an all-out aim battle on top of the point. I mean, they, they didn't really differentiate too much. They both had very similar play styles, very similar strategies, just played at different loops. Viking went for a two health pack steal on loop number two. Hat went for one at loop number one, and then they both did the same thing loop number two one. They just kind of switched the way they did it. And then loop number three just kind of became who was able to take down the other first. You can see Riken, good counter play here, gonna stop that clone one. Isn't able to stop the clone two, but he's gonna play a very defensively around the ramps. Try to keep that clone two alive. Hap hasn't spotted him out just yet, so Riken's gonna be able to take down the clone two and the clone one, getting himself full HP on top of the point. Hap still has both health packs available. If Riken wants to play this right, he can go for a health pack steal from that right side clone, but instead he's going to opt for maybe playing a little bit more aggressively. No, he wants to play very defensively. He's waiting to spot out that clone three. He spots him out here, but he gets spotted out first from Hap, and now it's a battle of who can take down the other first, and it's going to be Hap who's able to successfully do that, but he's not able to get on top of the point. That's going to bring us into overtime, and Riken's looking much better at this moment. There are two health packs available, so Hap still has a chance. It's not completely over yet. Or as the announcer would say, it's not over yet. Looks like Riken wants to go for an invisibility strat. Should be able to take down Hap's clone one. I'm not quite sure. I mean, we didn't see a lot of fire coming at the very end. He used a lot of bullets to take down that, that barrel. No clones on top of the point here. Looks like clone one are gonna get taken down for Riken. Was able to get the health pack here. It looks like Hap's not even gonna utilize any of the other health packs. There still could be some good pressure for Riken. He could be able to win it out here. Isn't able to get the clone one, unfortunately, even after the resync back for his invisibility strat. So if we look carefully, Hap's most likely gonna run for that back left health pack that we're looking at here. No, he's going to run for the right one. He wants to steal it away from that other clone. And that's what's going to happen here. Riken's going to be on the offensive here. Play around the health pack. He could go for the win. Hap's going to try to take down all the opponent clones. At least that's a good trade-off. Make his push here. Going to get spot out by Riken. He gets taken down. But the clone one and clone two are still alive for, for Hap. A second overtime in this game. And there's no health packs back up. Hap's going to spawn on top of the point And pre-fire the heck out of all the clones. He's, he's probably going to take himself down in the process, but, I mean, he really wants to take down Riken. Unfortunately for him, he is going to reload as he makes an aggressive push towards Riken. So he does get taken down loop number one. I don't even think he made it on top of the point. Hap going to spawn on top of the point. Middle to no health. He could get pre-fired on. I feel like that's what's going to happen, and that's exactly what happens. There goes the clone too. Now Riken has every every chance to win it here. He's got he's got full HP on this clone too. He's gonna be alive for pretty much until the end of the loop. Clone one is looking pretty healthy. But clone three is still gonna spawn on top of the point. Is it? Yeah, clone three gonna spawn on top of the point. He's gonna get pre-fired on. Whether he survives or not is a different story and 
He is going to be able to survive, but he's running directly into the eyes of Hap, and he gets taken down. Now, Hap has the biggest chance of making a comeback. He's got to take on the Clone 1 and the Clone 2 before it's too late. Takes on the Clone 1. He's going to reload. He has enough time to take down Riken's Clone 2, and the damage is there. That's going to be Hap getting a second point. Now, Riken's got to be feeling the pressure. One more point is all that's needed for Hap to win this match series, and it's looking like he will. I mean... Hap hasn't really lost many rounds. He loses it sometimes, but that's more due to a misplay rather than Riken outplaying him. Or the aim battle at point, as you can see. Loop number two. Advantage going to Riken in this round. Or in this loop so far. The cap wants to continue on with the strategy, and it's been working out phenomenally well for him. I mean, Riken has not been able to answer back properly for what what Hap has been pulling out. Riken is going to be able to explode that barrel, take down Hap's clone too, but at the cost of an impromptu invisibility strat. Now, if Hap is able to respond accordingly, he, accordingly, he should be able to take down that that barrel before it desyncs him in the later loop. Probably going to happen right about here. No, nope, not quite yet. He does spot out Riken's clone 3. He's going to go on the offensive. He does force Riken to pick up that health pack. But Riken goes for an aggressive push and steal the health pack away from Hap. He has enough time to get a point of his own. And that's going to be Riken getting his first point of the game. Riken potentially making a comeback. You can see that the pressure that Hap put on. I'm surprised that Riken, after picking up the health pack, Hap didn't go for a more uh, aggressive play. He did have two health packs on his side. But Riken was able to run directly over to Hap's side, steal the health pack away from, from Hap, and then go, go for the point. Looking like Riken could make a comeback. Loop number two, Riken's got a good setup. He's got the invisibility strike going for him. He's got the counterplay around with a clone one. And he, he actually didn't take down the clone one just yet. He, from pretty low, he tried to go for an impromptu invisibility strat again while he rushed for the barrel. But the clone one from Riken gonna take down his clone two with a pre pre melee, I guess. Riken's looking good to win it. He's gotta take down that barrel before it's too late. However, Hap still has one more point. The game could end right here. Clone two already taken down for Hap. Clone one brought down pretty low. Hap's gonna rush towards that health pack, pick it up, and so is Riken. Here comes the push. Riken, Hap's got enough time to take down those clones, but Riken's gonna make his push. No, it's gonna go into overtime. Riken, one step away from getting on top of the point. And how devastating could that be? I mean, you see the point right in front of you. You're the only one left. And with just a sliver, of, you needed at least 0.3 seconds maybe to have made it on top of the point. Now the saving grace here is Riken did have a little bit more HP coming into that. I believe he should have about three quarters HP. I could be wrong on that. Both players clone two is gonna spawn on top of the point, make their push, set up their play. And it looks like neither player really wants to have those invisibility strats come into play. The barrels are very devastating, especially near the end of the loop when there's no health pack to utilize. Right now, Riken is able to get a huge advantage. Take it down and loop clone one and two for, for half. Now here's the moment of truth. Riken's full HP. He didn't take a... Oh no, he's 87 HP. That's very healthy. He still can make this work. He's getting heavily pre-fired on. He's got down to half health. Now, Hap is able to spot out and know exactly where Riken is. He takes down the clone 2. That's going to be big for Hap. That's going to put him back into the favor, but the clone 2 for Hap gets taken down. He spots out the clone 3. He spots out the clone 1. He takes him down, and that's Hap going to get that match victory. Hap played. He basically took one out of Riken's book. He played a random ramps. He was able to successfully take down the clone 2 before Riken could even take down the other clone 2. And that gave Hap all the time he needed to take down the clone 3 and get himself into a very prime position.
Here we are with a best of three match rather than a best of five. And that's going to be numbers versus remix. Now we call them numbers because it's going to be incredibly difficult to cast a character or player name. Three, zero, six, eight, three, two, zero, zero, eight, 80,000 in the middle of things. We'll call them numbers in the meantime here, but numbers is going to go for a two health pack steal. But no, he wants to go for the hunt. He has some time to be able to get the kill and is going to be able to get the health pack. But very well played, actually. I mean, he, he went for the health pack steal. He went for the damage and he was able to get on top of the point. And that's a very precise B hopping mechanics. Now it looks like Numbers wants to go for another. He really wants to take down this clone one and he's going to do so. He has enough time to get the health pack rush back to his home base. And this is a very interesting match altogether. He is going to be able to secure another kill onto that clone two for Remix. And that's going to give him a loop two advantage. I don't... Remix has to go in for a very aggressive push if he wants to win this out here. It's going to be difficult to say exactly how this is going to play out. He's going to spot out the clone two. Here's the aggressive push that he needed. He's got that planned out. Now he has a good idea. He, he spotted out where that clone three is. He's going to let time play out just a little bit. And now they're going to make their push. But numbers is the one that's going to be able to win it out here. And bring it into overtime. It's not going to be. It's not going to be in his favor. He's got a little to no health. His clone three did take down that clone three at the end for remix. And numbers is got a huge disadvantage. Spawning in the center of two clones. Any pre-fire will do. Numbers able to secure that kill loop number one. Now, loop number one, loop number two, you're going to see Numbers have a huge advantage because he's going to have full HP versus the lower HPs of Remix. So this one has about 25 health, 10 health. My goodness. Any pre-fire shot could come down at any moment. And Numbers has a pretty good vantage point. He's going to spot out that clone one. Barely sp spots out that peaking clone two. But just, he barely needs enough damage to get him down. And that's going to be that second loop advantage going in favor of Numbers. Now, the most important part, loop number three. Numbers has little to no health. How much health to be exact? 17. I don't think he's going to get out of this one alive. All Numbers has to do is land one good shot. Pre-fire shot's not going to land. Now, Numbers is on the hide. But Remix is on top. He's going to spot out Numbers and take him down. Now, all he's going to do is clear off the clear clone one, clone two. That looks like it's what it happened. Does, is he going to be able to make it? Does he have enough time? No, he immediately on the last shot. Isn't able to close it out. And now it's back in numbers' favor. Numbers. Lagging a little bit at the start. Maybe planning out what his next move is going to be. Once he gets some good pre-fire in, is a little bit out in the open. That could come to bite him back at the end of loop 2 or loop 3. But for now... He's going to get desynced, and Remix is not going to get on top of the point. Still in favor of numbers. Ooh, numbers. Clone 2. Little to no HP on top of the point, and there's no health pack to run to. He does get taken down by that Clone 2 from Remix, and now Remix has a pretty good advantage. Let's see how this plays out. Remix is the one that is going to spawn on top of the point, loop number 3. So Remix has to survive a little bit more, especially with that Clone 1 not getting on top of the point. If Numbers wants to win this, all he's got to do is take down that Clone 3, which is going to be a little bit easier now he's got less health, and take down the Clone 2. The Clone 1, he can even forego altogether. Here comes Remix, rushing towards safety, is able to get the safety, but hasn't quite got a good exactly idea. He knows where Numbers is, he's trying to... Spot out the peak. Knows where it is. He spots him out. Now he's going to make this push. Does he have enough damage output to take him down? He does. And he clears off the point. That's going to be one point going in favor of Remix. Fantastically played. Remix knew he had to play very defensively. Hide his clones. Keep him alive as long as he could. And then he had a really good vantage point on numbers. Numbers coming in from the ramps. That is a very safe, very secure spot to play around. And that's exactly what's needed. But now both players, Remix actually counterplaying that two health pack steal away from numbers. And this is going to hurt him drastically. All Remix has to do now is in one loop, play and take down that clone one and then pick up the health pack. That's going to remove that clone one away from numbers in the game completely. He doesn't have to do it. He can save it for the third loop. 
However, he's going to have less pressure. Oh, and numbers coming in from behind. Remix had no idea. He just suddenly surprised them. But the thing is, this play from Remix or from numbers, that's going to be very easy to counterplay. Numbers or Remix is going to have a good idea of exactly where he comes in. He's got the map. You can see. Well, we can't see, but Remix can see. He spots out the clone 2. No, he's going to ignore him. That clone 2 is dead. He's not going to come back from anything. Now, the clone 3s are going to duke it out. Who's going to be able to win it? It's going to be Numbers. Numbers, with the overwhelming advantage, is going to get his first point. I think if Remix wanted to play this a little better, he needed to have taken down that clone 2. He should have played around that health pack, and that would have been the normal strat. However, Numbers was also following along that clone 2 path as well. It would have been a very difficult fight. It would have been a 1v2 potential scenario with any pre-fires coming in. But Remix, not able to win that point out. The health back seal probably going to come in. Remix is going to play on the defensive. He doesn't want to give us away position just yet. But now the firefight is going to come into play. Both players are going to pull out the pistol. Who's able to land that last shot? It's going to be Numbers that comes out on top. Loop number one. Both players doing some pretty good work. It really has been coming down to the aim battle for some of these, for most of these games. For some of them, it really has been strategy. I mean, the way that Remix and Numbers are strategizing, it looks almost like Numbers has been proactively planning against Remix, and Remix has been just playing very reactively. Now, what this means is typically Numbers would have the advantage controlling the pacing of the game but remix has had pretty good reactions and understanding of the game where he's able to play around and what's needed now numbers is going to pick up the health pack go for a second health pack back at his home base he's got no health packs to revert back to but they're going to make their push and it's going to be remix the one that comes out on top this time and that's going to be the second point for remix overall not a bad play from numbers he went for a health pack steal that countered plays the two i believe a little bit Unfortunately for him, his one would have already gone for it. It's a little bit of a redundant act. And what ends up happening here is Remix allow that allows Remix's clones to play out their time. What really needed to be done is numbers needed to have gone for an aggressive kill over onto Remix's past clones. And that would have given him much more of an advantage at the end of the loop. Now that's numbers securing that loop one advantage. Good old fashioned firefight. As much as we love to see the big brain plays, I also love to see these good old fashioned firefights. It's just who can shoot down the other first. Now Remix, Remix in, or Numbers, I might say, is playing hyper aggressive around these clones. He really wants to make sure they get taken down, even at the cost of, of his own clones HP. However, Remix didn't do much to punish him on that last round. It looks like that might change this time around. Picking up that health pack. Playing out safe a little bit longer. There goes the clone 2. Clone 2 for both teams. Remix is going to make his push. Going to spot out numbers. Take down that clone 3. Is he able to have enough time to take down the clone 1? No. That's going to be both health packs still in favor of numbers. And bringing it into overtime. Going to give him a huge advantage. Remix playing defensively as he should in this overtime loop. Gonna spot out numbers, take him down, headshot after headshot, finish the job with a good old spray. No clones gonna spawn on top of the point just yet. It looks like it's really, it's gonna be Remix's clone 3 that spawns on top of the point. Now Remix was able to, or not Remix, Numbers was able to pick up both health packs Looks like he's biding his time a little bit. And I think that's not the play you want to make, unfortunately. Numbers, what's going to happen is Remix knows now that Numbers did not pick up that health pack. And he's got a lot of time to race towards it. If he manages to ping the correct one, he's going to win it out. And I don't think he pre-fires at a pretty good spot. 
We'll see here. Remix is going to run towards it. He's going to get that health pack here. He can wait a little bit, but he's going to decide not to. He wants to play a little bit in safety. Numbers has the high ground, but he takes so much damage. All it takes is one more shot. He could still turn it around, but no. Remix is going to be able to turn it back into his favor. He's got the last push and the last kill, and that's going to be Remix closing out this game. Phenomenally well played. Remix knew exactly what needed to be done. He saw the win condition, that window of opportunity, and he took it. Welcome back. We're here in the best of three match, Numbers versus Remix. And right now, Remix is leading the charge. One nothing. One more game is going to allow him to win this best of three match series. And just to reiterate from the last time we casted in game number one, on the first week of KOC, we did have a little bit of mix up with some of the players thinking it's a best of three for the matches. When in reality, it is a best of five. So these players did play a best of three, but it will still count towards their match score win. Remix is going to get spotted out here and taken down by Numbers. Numbers ultimately going to come out on top loop number one, but just barely going to make it out. And we see Remix playing ramps a lot in these games. It looks like Numbers follows in suit as well. Remix has a good peaky angle. What's going to happen here? Numbers is going to be able to change the tides in his favor and pick, take him down. And with Numbers going for a two health pack steal, that health, second health pack gets stolen away from Remix, booting out that clone 2 from the game. Not a whole lot of survivability in that case. Loop number 3. Remix getting spotted out already. He's got 64 HP. He's on the run. He's got a little bit of damage in. He does get taken down. Here comes the health pack steal. And now Numbers has a disadvantage. He doesn't have any health pack to get back up. And now Remix might be able to save the day, but not enough damage output. And that's going to be an overtime play. Now, I think it's still in favor of Remix. He did have... He, he was pretty healthy coming at the end of that loop. The only clone left alive for, for Numbers was that clone too. So nothing just yet. Both players going to make their push already. But only in Remix synced up to the timeline at the current moment this could change though depending on how numbers clone 2 plays out he could still be able to take out that clone 3 he's got half hp it's possible he could get desynced himself he's getting some pretty good fire pre-fire in and now they're both playing the defensive waiting game clone 1 already taken down for numbers clone 1 taken out for remix they're going to make their push, but Numbers doesn't have enough time, and he gets desynced. That's going to be Remix with the Loop 2 advantage. I think he's got the Loop 3 advantage as well. Coming into this, depends on how much HP he's got. He looks, he has full HP. He's got a huge advantage. He's got point control at the moment. He's got to get out alive, though. He does. 
Playing very defensively, not exactly sure where numbers are going to come out of. He spots out the clone one, there goes the clone one. He spots out the clone three, and now clone three numbers is playing extremely defensively. Will he make it in time? They're going to spot each other out, and there goes numbers as he falls to his death. And that's going to be Remix getting that first point. So far, so good. It's looking real good for Remix here. He had great point control, great coverage, great positioning, and he was able to take down numbers in a very safe and secure fashion. Now, numbers, it's not over yet. We've, we've seen numbers make very aggressive plays that have worked out in his favor. It hasn't worked out so in that last round so far, but oh, that's going to hurt. Trying to go for that third health pack steal. Not enough time, unfortunately. That's going to leave his clone right on the open. Only a small select handful of people are able to get a three health pack steal. So far on the list, we've got JP, we've got Karambo. I'm not sure exactly who else. Maybe Selucky was able to make it, maybe not. But for sure, those two players, that's going to be the two health pack steal working against Numbers' favor. And Remix still going to get desynced at the end of the timeline. But for how long? Very easily counterable strat. All they're going to do is pick up the health pack. How's Remix going to play it out? Might spot out the clone three. He spots out the clone three and the clone two. Getting some good damage. Now here comes the push. He takes down the clone two, but the Remix or Numbers' the clone three is going to go back for the health pack again. Now they're going to make their push. Clone 3 for Remix does get taken down, but he's got the Clone 1 and Clone 2 alive. They're still going to remain alive as it goes into overtime. This is heavily in favor of Remix to win this. He's got the Clone 3 at full HP, and he brought down Re uh, Numbers' his Clone 3 pretty low as well. He wasn't able to take him out, which is very fortunate for him. But with Numbers taking out Remix's Clone 3, it's going to be phenomenal. But Numbers... Not again. He's nowhere near on top of the point loop number one. That could come back to bite him. He needed every advantage he could get. Just because Remix has that huge advantage coming into this loop. He's even got a full HP clone too. The only health pack that was up. And I think num Remix was able to pick it up. He went in pretty fast. I didn't see a single frame of Miss B Hop. It was pretty precise, pretty accurate. But with numbers coming in from above... Remix is going to get taken down, and that's going to be numbers again. No, not on top of the point. That's two clones not on top of the point. Everything is riding onto this clone three, and look how much health this clone three has. It's going to get taken down right away, I would say. Here comes the rush. The wrong side. That's going to be it. I mean, if he wants to, all Remix has to do is just jump on top of the point. He's just going to make sure not to get pre-fired on, but there goes the clone two. There goes the clone one. That's going to be it. Oh, the clone one's still alive. Isn't able to take him down there, but he's still going to get his second point. One more clone point is needed to win it. This could be it. Oh, that looks like a FF if I saw one. It looks like numbers didn't want to finish out that game. And this game is going to be a 3-0 sweep in favor of Remix as he takes the match win.
We're here with game one in a best of five match between Schalke and Riken. Now these two titans have gone head to head, I would assume, in rank Q every so often as both Riken and Schalke are currently higher ranked in the rank queue even after the reset. With Schalke outranking Riken at the moment, but that could change as well. We don't know exactly how these two are going to play out, but it looks like Schalke is not actually going to pick up the health pack. He's going to feign it, go for the second one. But does he have enough time to make a push towards it? He is not. He gets ever so close. He does manage to pick up the kill onto Riken. However, with Riken being on top of the point, that gives him more of an advantage coming into this next loop. Riken's going to play a little bit defensively. Takes down that clone too with very precise shots right to the face. Shaka is going to come back up and looks like he's going to go for an invisibility strat type of play. Now the clone 2 for Riken is going to be full HP. However, when the invisibility strat play comes into play, I don't know how much longer that's going to be for. But it depends on how Riken responds and reacts to this play. He does have to play on this case here because that clone 1 is going to pick up a health pack, but it doesn't matter. Riken's going to go for a health pack steal. That's going to keep that clone 2 out of this game, and there goes the clone 1 out of this game as well. Now Riken is just on the hunt, trying to take down whatever clone he can, but with that clone 3 for Shalka on top of the point, it's going to bring into overtime. That was very well played by, by Schalke. He knew that he, he was trying to go for the win here, and you can clearly see that. He had a pretty good chance at winning it here. Riken, unfortunately, spent a little bit too much time trying to deny the health packs. Sometimes it's not really necessary, as he can just go straight for the kill. However, that explosion from the barrel is going to take down the clone one, but only in this first loop. It's very easy that that barrel could get taken down in a future loop, leaving Riken's clone one in the dust. Now, Riken's Clone 1 and Clone 2 are going to spawn back on top of the point. The Clone 3 for Riken is going to spawn over on the side. He's got a pretty good angle on, on what's going on there. I I don't know exactly. I don't think he has a good advantage in this game. Mainly because shalka has got a health pack over on his blue side from our point of view to the left. That doesn't get taken down until, I would say, like midway to the game. Yeah, 11 seconds left on the clock and you start with 15. So you got 4 seconds to make a beeline over there. And I'm pretty sure Schalke can make it in time. He's going to rush over to it. No, he wants to go for the aggressive play. He wants to take down Riken, but Riken turns the tide back into his favor. And he's going to be able to get the kill onto Schalke. Now all he's got to do is clean up house. If he's able to do that, not get any pre-fire shots in, then he'll be able to save the day. And that's what's going to happen here. That's going to be Riken getting the first point. Schalke made a great play. He knew that if he got the kill onto Riken, it would have been over, but Riken had a great loop around all around the barricade, gave him the old ring around, and then ended up going for the win. It just came to a matter of Riken out aiming and out skilling Schalke at the very end, but that's what Schalke forced out. He tried to strategize as best as he could to force Riken into a very disadvantageous position. But Riken quickly turned the tides in his favor, and you could see how that paid off. Riken gonna make his push, already spotting out Shaka, and is able to delete him. Gonna get on top of the point and get that first loop advantage. Now, Riken did go for an earlier push in that first loop. That clone one may not survive at the second or third loops most likely in the third loop could get taken down here but Riken gonna steal away that health pack from from Schalke he does manage to pick it up but he does get deleted right after that has to go for the second health pack to get back into the action and that's gonna put some good pressure onto Schalke Schalke is gonna lose one health pack on his side Riken does as well however it's at the cost of putting more pressure over onto Schalke so Riken seems like he's got this a little bit better planned out we'll see how it plays out in the next loop Gonna go for them shots. Not quite gonna land anything on that clone too. Keep him alive a little bit longer, but he does get desync. Shalka is gonna desync Riken once again, and now they're gonna finish off that clone too. Shalka is able to do so, and that's gonna be a first point for Shalka. Pretty well played by Shalka. He knew that he had an he could go for an aggressive play, try to steal that health pack. It looks like it got quickly taken away, so he he backed off a little bit was able to spot out the clone 2 and quickly spotted out the clone 3, took him down right away, and that get, got him the victory in this round.
Now both players, I want to say they're very equally leveled in skill, pretty equal in, in aim. They've got both a lot of experience under their belt within Quantum League. So they're pretty evenly matched. I can see this game going back and forth, maybe even getting us to the game five match that we all love to see. But right now, I want to say it's slightly more in skew to favor of Riken. Just because Jackie, although Jackie is a, a very fun pick, gives you that speed boost while you're desynced, you gotta be desync to use it, and that's a huge disadvantage. Now Riken, he's got the Bjarn pick here. That's gonna help him a lot. He sees the he brings down the clone a little bit and is able to use that wall hack aim to seize him through the wall and then plan accordingly. Final loop. Right now, heavily favored for Riken to win this. He wants to go for an aggressive play. He isn't going to be able to steal that health pack, but now he's in a precarious situation. Shalka is going to spot him out, take him down. He, Riken comes back up with the health pack. They're going to make their push. Riken is able to take down Shalka. Can he take down the clone too? Yes, he will. And that's going to be Riken's second point. Just when you thought it looked dangerous and all hope was lost for Riken, he quickly makes a beeline back for the health pack. Shalko wasn't able to capitalize as much as he hoped after getting that clone 3 kill. And he, he put some pre pretty decent pre pressure. Oh my god, even English today. He put some decent pressure over onto Riken. But ultimately, Riken outplayed him mostly purely on aim at the very end. He forced himself in a very good situation where it came down to an aim battle and Riken had a huge advantage because he spotted out Shalka in a much better position and was able to take him down to gain that point. Now going to second loop, neither player making any big fundamental plays, just sticking to the same old tried and true strategy. For a second left, they're going to make their push and Riken is able to secure that kill onto the clone 2. The clone 1 is still going to be alive for Riken. However, Shalka did make invisibility strat loop number 1 with his clone 1. So Riken's clone 1 could get taken down at the end of the loop. It's hard to say exactly how it's going to play out. But we'll see how it goes. Here comes the resync for the clone 1. As you can tell by the announcer shouting it clearly. Four seconds left on the clock and Riken's already on top of the point along with Shalka. Riken's got little to no health, but Shalka is gonna be able to seal the deal and take down Riken, bringing us two to two. Battle for point number five. I mean, the way that Riken set up this game was very standard. He went for a uh, barricade to barricade push over on his clone three, actually. Usually you do that on with center to center for your clone one. But he went with clone 1 and clone 2 playing around the left and right barricades. And I think that put him in a more difficult position using utilizing the health packs, which gave Shalka much more advantage. Shalka could afford to play a lot more aggressively. Meanwhile, Riken couldn't. Riken, if he played aggressively, he would have had to make a beeline over for one of the side health packs. And that could have taken maybe two seconds to get there. Plus, he needs at least three seconds to get on top of the point. Unless you're Karambo, which obviously he's not in this game. And that hurt him dearly. Second loop. And now we're going to start to see these players set up what they really need to set up here. Shaka is able to get the kill onto the clone one, but now he's going to go for an invisibility strat again. He might... Oh, he will pick up the health pack. And that's a very surprising play. Riken thought he was going to go for a full-on invisibility strat, but that still may not pay in his favor. I mean, when Shaka resyncs that clone two back by shooting the barrel... Riken's going to see him clear as day. He just needs a few more shots in, and that's going to secure that kill onto the clone too. Oh, Riken already getting blasted away. Might get taken down. Here comes the desync. Resync back in. Riken's got little to no health. Shalka's going to go for a defensive push. This could be Shalka's game to win it, and that's exactly what's going to happen. Oh, the clone 2 is still alive for Riken. They're not able to take it down. It's going into overtime. I thought it was it. I mean, Shalka... He, he had everything set up. All he had to do was just finish that last clone, but unfortunately the damage just was not there. It looks like Shalka not going to do so well this round. I mean, not even going for a... I don't know, that was invisibility strat. I thought that was a headshot. 
Explosion coming in, and that's the clone one getting taken down for Shalka again. But Shalka's going, he's got the, the sniper rifle. He wants to play the long distance game. Ooh, he's going to go for a foot shot. Unfortunately, that's no headshot here. He is going to get taken down, and that's going to be Riken making it much more secured for his game win. For game one. Moment of truth. Shalka's on top of the point with full HP. He's got a really good point control. The clone two for Riken. Almost as good as dead. That's still going to happen. But at least the clone... Oh, the clone 3 actually gets taken down for, for Shalka as well. Riken has everything set for this game. The clone 2 did get taken down for Riken. He still has to clear off that last clone. And he's able to do so. That's going to be game 1 going in favor of Riken. GG's. Riken was picking up that kill onto the clone 3 for Shalka. Ended phenomenally for him he was able to turn the tides i thought he had that i thought he was going to get taken down shaka had a really prime position but unfortunately for him Riken played it phenomenally well good game to both players Welcome back. We're here with game number two in the best of five between Riken and Shalka. Right now, Riken is taking the charge with a one game victory already over Shalka. Are you ready, folks? Who is going to win this next game? I wonder. Right now, Riken looking good from that last game. Although, however, both players did go two and two at the end of that game. So Riken was barely able to make it out of that alive. Now, Riken is going to dash right through that explosion, survive, and take down Shalka with headshot after headshot, but barely surviving after that. Shalka did have a pretty good fire on that spot with the grenade launcher. And pulling out the Violet Pig, this is going to be huge for him. I mean, he's got a lot of firepower now, firepower now with the grenade launcher. He's got to be careful with his own pre-fire shots. Oh, but the clone one is desynced. However, when the resync happens, if there is one, Shalka could get taken down. But right here, right now, Shalka is going to delete that clone one and clone two away from Riken, getting himself on top of the point. Now, Shalka has got some good control. This could go over in his favor. He's looking pretty strong. As long as Riken is able to follow up and take down the clone two, which it looks like he just may. But the clone two for Riken is taken down as well. Clone two is still alive for Shalka with a sliver of health. But Riken's got little to no health. He takes on the clone 3. The last bit of damage comes in. And that's Riken getting the first point of the game in a fantastic turnaround. How did Riken do this? We got to watch from this point, first person point of view. He wasn't able to get the kill into the clone 2. But he realized that there's one shot left. All that was needed to take him down. And I think I see what happened there. He spotted out that clone 3 from Shalka at point blank and just laser beamed him to the face, took him down, and then continued to sweep the rest of the clones. So pretty well played by Riken. Now it looks like he wants to focus on keeping that clone 1 alive a little bit longer, but man, oh man, is those headshots on point today for Riken.
So with Riken picking up that one health pack, that is going to reduce a little bit of, of survivability for his future clones. Unless he decides to pick it up a little bit earlier, it still gets taken away. And I think him taking away stopped that clone too from, from Shalka taking up the health pack. And that's going to keep Riken's clone 1 and clone 2 alive that much longer. I think this next point could go in favor of Riken again. So here comes the play. Riken able to spot out that clone too. Takes him down nice and early. Goes for an aggressive push to steal that other health pack. Now he's going to make his push, but he might get taken down by Shalka. He's got to be careful. A pre-fire shot could take down Shalka, and it does. No, it's not just the pre-fire. It's the clone 3, the clone 2, the clone 1, all working in sync to take down Shalka. Raid boss down. That's going to be second point for Shalka. Uh, for not Shalka, for Riken. I think it's a mixture of Riken just landing the shots. Maybe the pre-fire shots didn't come in. Maybe we're just too excited, but I like to believe it did. Oh, Shaka. Can I go for a laser play? Not quite sure how that's going to play out here. It's going to be extremely difficult. It's a very easily counterable play, but however, unfortunately for him, he wasn't able to land a single shot. I think Shaka is feeling the pressure of this game. It looks almost like he's, he's almost done with it. I mean... 2-0 and after that last dominating defeat it's got to be getting to that mental psyche and that's another part of this game or esports in general any game in general is the mental psyche how are you able to come back from your tilt do you keep your hat on your decoups tilted hat on or do you take it off Shalka, let's see if he's able to take it off and get a win back in this game a final loop Right now, Riken is leading. It looks like it's going to be a 3-0 sweep. Riken's over on the side. Is going to be able to pick up the health pack. Go for an aggressive push. Here comes both players push. Right now, Shaka does get some good sights. Good lineups. He doesn't secure the kill. But the clone 1 does manage to pick up that last clone 2, unfortunately. Which puts it more in favor of Riken in this overtime loop. Shaka. Getting heavily fired on. Is going to get decent. He's got 3 HP. One shot is all it needs. And Riken's got full HP. But even so, Shalka. Fantastic play. Going to be able to land amazingly accurate headshots after headshots after headshots. Right onto Riken's face. Take him down with only 3 HP left. However, I don't have a lot of hope for that clone 1. I mean, he does get shot by the... Clone 1, for, or for, for Shalka, that is. There goes the Clone 1. That's going to keep Riken's Clone 1 alive. However, the Clone 1, or Clone 2 for Shalka is still alive. The damage is going to be done. And that's going to be Shalka on top of the point. Loop number 2 with a full HP clone. How is this going to play out? We see, so Riken's going to respawn back on point. Or back at base. And so is Shalka. Nothing too drastic happening yet. Except for the fact that Riken's clone 2 does get taken down, but so does Shalka. Now, this is going to be dangerous. This is going to be huge. It's going to be a battle on the point, but no battle is needed as Riken has already... Or no, Shalka, actually the one that turns it around, gets the point in this game. What happened there? We missed that. You can see the clone 2 gets taken down nice and early for Riken. That puts it in, in very much Shalka's favor. Oh, but he got the sniper rifle, so he's trying to find his target. We don't quite see exactly how that plays out. It looks like he landed one shot, finished it off with the SMG, and then captured the point. Just as we said, Shalka taking off that tilted hat, going full ham, pulling up the G fuel, go pulling out all the stops, is going to go and focus on taking down Riken. Riken again, going to keep his clone a little bit more survivable by the end of the loop. Two seconds left, going to make his push. Headshot, headshot, headshot. There it is. And I don't think Shaka got on top of the point with that clone one. Looking like... Looking like he was close. Not on top of the point. I don't think he was. Riken has a huge advantage. He's got the kill and he's got the point capture. That keeps the clone 1 alive a little bit longer. That's going to keep that clone 2 distracted for that much longer. And I think Riken's deciding to opt for 
not focusing that clone 2 as he believes that that clone 2 from Shaka is heavily pushed up. And I think this is a pretty big burn play. You see Raiken, he got taken down from his clone 1 and then he picks up the health pack. And I don't think Shaka was planning on that all too much. Oh, but there's a health pack pickup. The clone 2 getting taken down for Shaka and the health pack is nowhere near available for Shaka, but Raiken has got to be able to make his push. Here comes the play. The damage is going to be done, but the clone 2 is the only one on top of the point. Oh, but the clone 3 as well for Shaka bring us in the overtime. Now, this is extremely unfortunate. Oh, not so unfortunate. So, this play still could go either way. Shaka has a slight bit of a disadvantage. However, he is brought back to speed with the two health packs that he has at his disposal, disposal at his own base. One on each side. He could take either one, but so can Raiken. Now, Raiken only has one shot to do this with the clone two, but Shaka has got... He's got his clone three. That's going to be more crucial here. We'll see how this plays out. Which way Raiken is going to go. He's going to rush towards that, and I think that Shaka is going to go that way as well. Although, him seeing that where Raiken is going to show up from could spell disaster. Here comes Raiken with the push. Going to go reload. Three seconds left. He does have the time to do it is able to land the shots and get the push in. Now he's got clone one and clone two on top of the point. Ooh, this is a very close game. If Shaka gets taken down here and Raiken's able to get even any pre-fire or there goes the damage. Raiken's gonna rush towards that health pack here. He does manage to pick it up in time and take down the clone two. Now, Shaka's got a doesn't quite know exactly. Oh, he does spot out where Raiken is. They're going to spot each other out. Try to take each other down. Here comes the push. Here comes the damage. Is it enough? It will be. And that's going to be Raiken taking this game as well. Bringing us two to nothing over in his favor. Shaka made a pretty good play overall. I think Raiken just had a much stronger positioning around that. He had a lot of cover. He took down the clone 2 and the clone 1 away from Shaka. So all he had to do was focus on the clone 3. Meanwhile, Shaka has to focus on the clone 1 and clone 3 as well. And that's how this game will end in favor of Raikid. Here we are, game number three. Raiken only needing one more game to win it with a 3-0 sweep. Shalka has to come in with three game sweep if he wants to reverse it and go for the win. However, that's easier said than done. Raiken has been showing very strong showings in this last game. He went 3-0 in the last game, or I believe 3-1 if anything. And Shalka has just been holding on for dear life. Yeah, he's going to make his push. He ha isn't going to be able to get on top of the point as he will. Oh, oh no, he didn't. Not enough time. If he was able to land that last B-hop or at least what we believe is the last B-hop. I mean, spectator is a little bit iffy sometimes, but it looks like Shaka didn't land one of the B-hops and he had to run towards the point. Now, this time around, Shaka is going to go with the Justin pick. That's going to be some good. That's going to be pretty good for him and a pretty strong pick as well. Because Shaka has gotten pretty 
some pretty good pre-fire shots over onto Riken in the last game. Riken is going to continue on with the Bjarn pick and it's worked heavily in his favor. I don't see why he wouldn't just change any strategy to anything up really. Especially since he had a good showing last game. Riken going to get taken down by Shalka's clone 3 and the clone 2 as well is going to get taken down. Oh, right at the very end. There it is. Riken still back in it. He does have the health pack back into the action, but it's 3 versus 1. Will Shalka be able to win this out or is it going to be Riken? Riken gets taken down and that's going to be Shalka getting the first point of the game. I think that was just an overwhelming showing from, from Shalka in this case. There was really nothing that Riken could do. Shalka got the one, the, the two, he got the three, and that forced Shalka or Riken to pick up that health pack to get back into the action. And he wasn't able to do anything. I mean, even if Riken take, uh, took down Shalka's clone three, he still had to deal with the clone one and clone two. That was an overwhelming victory for Shalka overall. And this could be Shalka's game. I, I don't really know. I mean, he was looking good so far. Nothing really too special coming out. He's going to get wh whacked at the very end from Riken. And Riken actually has full HP by the end of it. Something we don't see too often, especially with the clone one. Now Riken going to play very safe. Both together with that clone one and clone two. And it looks like Shalka's actually going to play an invisibility strat. Now it looks like Shalka loves to play these invisibility strats. So Riken's name of the game here is... He's got to try to take down as many barrels and try to deny those invisibility strats that are coming from Shalka. Get more information. That's easier said than done. It goes with denying for, for Shalka at least. He's going to stop that clone 1 from getting taken down. He's going to get spotted out by the clone 3. He has to get the health pack back up into the action. The clone 3 actually gets taken down by Shalka's clone 1. And there's not enough time to get the health pack, get back in. And that's a just in pre-fire boost damage coming into play with Shalka getting the second point. This could be a very clean game for Shalka. That clone one, where he's not even, where is he pre-firing Shalka? How did you even land that? The clone one pre-firing, not even aiming at the the health pack area. He had believed that he'd be coming out of it, I guess, but he he just made two shots. Shalka slowly making his way towards the health pack. Not enough time to go back for the other one here. This could be very devastating for this clone one. It even gets taken down by the end. So now if Riken wants to counterplay this, he could go for a health pack steal on his own side. Could take down that clone one for good. But Shaka could get a good read on that here. Very risky to play. Now Shaka is going to go for the grenade launcher. Go for more zoning around. We don't know exactly where, but somewhere at least. So here comes Riken with a push, already took down the clone 1, now he's got his eyes set on the clone 2, is able to finish the job with the SMG versus pistol, gonna go in favor of the SMG every time. Well, almost every time. Some players are just phenomenal with the pistol. But right now, it's looking like Riken is favored to win this loop. However, shaka has got one more point to win this. He's got everything it takes, but he took himself down with a grenade launcher, and that's not the play that Shaka wanted. Riken has some time to get back on top of the point. Is he going to be able to make it? It could go into overtime as Shalka is barely going to survive through it. Bring into overtime. There's three clones near the point or at least on top, on top of the point or at least near it for Riken. With the clone three brought down to half just as well as Shalka. Now, Shalka's got a better, uh, slightly more favored position. He's got the health pack. Both of them have health packs on their own side. Doesn't look like Riken's going to get on top of the point, loop number one. However, he's going to secure that kill, giving him a slight advantage. However, it's still in favor of Shalka as he is on the point, and that's what matters. Riken's clone two going to rush towards the health pack steal and try to take down the clone one, but that's going to cost him dearly. He played very hyper aggressively trying to take down that clone two, and that didn't work out at all. I, I mean... He wasn't even able to take down the clone 1, and now his clone 1 not being on top of the point, his clone 2 not being on top of the point, is really going to come down to his clone 3. So Shalka's got quarter HP, Riken's got half. Riken's a little bit closer here. Where is he going to rush over to? He's going to run back to the half pack. Is he able to make it in time? Yes, he does. He picks it up here. Now the game play is looking a little bit better. He's got to be able to pr take down that clone 2. Is he able to do so? There goes the clone 1 and 2. You get your way on top of the point. Yes, he will. 
And that's Riken getting his first point of the game. And all he needs is two more, and that's going to close out this match series. So far, nothing, nothing too much. I thought that Riken would lose that play altogether. I mean, he went so aggressive, and he wasn't even able to capitalize on taking down that clone one, which he intended to. Or at least maybe the clone two by focusing on that. But he just got taken down so fast, and then somehow he turned it around. Firefight loop number one for both players. Riken getting shot from behind with 25 HP left. He's going to make his push and another invisibility strap is going to come into play from Shalka. I don't know how this will play out. Could be Shalka winning it here as well. I think it's set up pretty well in his favor. I mean, Shalka's got the, the invisibility strat. Riken's brought down pretty low at, after getting the health pack as well. That clone one doesn't have a lot of hope for it. Oh, man. Little to no HP. Here comes Shalka. Gonna make his push. Gonna be able to not take down the clone 2 or the clone 1. But he's able to at least get in the point while he's desynced. It's looking still heavily in favor of Riken. But only because we haven't seen how that invisibility strategy is gonna play out. So here's the moment of truth. All the players are gonna make their push. Riken already getting brought down to little to no health. And Shalka already picked up the health pack. Here comes Riken. Resyncing back after getting taken down from Shalka. Clone 1's going to get taken down for Riken, and the Clone 2 down for Shalka, but the Clone 3's are still alive, still going for it, and that's going to be Shalka, able to close out the game, finally making a comeback, and now he's on his way for a potential reverse sweep as he takes this third game. Look at the way that Shalka plays it out here. He's got Riken all controlled, all under his fingertips, dictating exactly where it's going to go. Riken doesn't even know that Shalka's coming in from behind, and Shalka just cleans up house, and gets the win. Riken versus Shalka. Riken leading two to one. And Shalka potentially gonna go for a reverse sweep here. He was down 0-2. He won the last game. If he's able to win it out here, then it's gonna be a winner takes all scenario where whoever wins that final game five is gonna take home that first match win. So far, both players gonna play a very standard setup here. Riken's able to get some good damage onto Shalka, but ultimately, Shalka's going to be the one that gets that first loop advantage. Now, we'll see how or if it's going to stay, which way that advantage is going to go in favor too. Right now, Riken wants to play a very aggressive strat. He wants to go up close and personal. That may cost him this round. That clone too, very hyper overextended. Shalka's not even going to bother focusing him. On top of that to boot, Riken's not even on top of the point. I don't know how this is going to play out. 
looking like like Raiken could lose this. Didn't play out that clone one as well. He didn't play out the clone two as well. Oh, he's got the clone one and clone two desynced already for, for Shalka. And now he's gonna go running in for that clone three. Is he able to get that last bit of damage? He does, and he secures all the kills. Raiken, the damage that he needed to output, he lands headshot after headshot and gets his first point. Surprisingly, I thought Riken had that very misplayed. I mean, his clone 2 was so pushed out. I think we're also looking at the wrong character. I mean, Shalka was the one that did it. Oh my goodness. Guys, we're so focused on the wrong character. Riken did manage to clear it out here. He made he made pretty good plays around that last round. So it looks like Raiken's the one that played very defensively. Shalka's the one that actually was playing hyper aggressively in the last loop. And I do apologize on how focused that was. Sometimes you get just so focused into the game, you kind of look at the wrong thing. Very easy to do in this. Here comes Shalka with an invisibility strat. He's going to pick up the health pack. Raiken is aware that is what happened. He may just go for... Oh, he doesn't even care. He just wants to go for that kill. This is Riken clearing up the clone one, clearing up the clone two, getting both of his clones healthy on top of the point. This next point could go in favor of Riken. So here he goes. Riken is going to spot out the clone two. Gets enough damage to take him down and picking up the health pack. So that clone two is out of here for Shalka. Now they're going to spot out the clone three. Is Riken going to get enough damage to take him down? Yes, he will. And he takes down the clone one in the process. That's going to be the second point for Riken. One more point away from getting this match victory. Riken, Riken, Riken. You can see how well he's controlling this game. He's got, he takes down the clone two in a very safe and prime position and gets the health pack to get back into the action. The clone one and clone two are able to secure the death on the clone one, and then comes the clone three battle. His laser point accuracy was able to take down Shalko very quickly. Now both players are trying to peek around the corner here, but it looks like Shalko may have just gone for a, gone for a laser play. Now laser is usually reserved for when you're just not trying as much, or you've got Violet and you've got the SMG and you're pulling out the laser. Not going to help him out that much in this round. I think he's got his tilted hat back on again. Oh, looks like he's going to be focused. Able to deal some significant damage. And it looks like he wants to use the laser as a bit of a pre-fire shot. And that could be pretty good as well. If he's able to land some good shots, even if you walk through it for a second, a little bit of damage comes out and a pre-fire boost is going to help immensely. But Shalk is going to be the one that gets a lot on top of the point all by himself. Loop number two. This could look in his favor to win it. If Riken is able to get the kill onto the clone 2, that's going to be it. Here comes Riken. He spots out the clone 1. But he can't quite get a hold on the clone 3 and clone 2. He's going to play a little bit defensively, waiting, biding his time. Kills the clone 3. And now he's going to secure that kill onto the clone 2. He does it. And that's going to be Riken getting the match victory with his last point. Look at that patience that Riken is pulling off here. He's waiting to the side, waiting for that three to show itself here. Gets a very prime position, takes down, takes him down just as he picks up the health pack, and then all he has to do is secure the kill into the clone two and secure his victory. That wraps up all of today's games for Challenger League Week One, Day One. I hope you all enjoyed our this YouTube experience on the YouTube premiere as much as I did as well. It's been a blast casting these games offline. I can, I'm probably in chat there. Hello, Star Wars in chat. And I'm here chatting with all you guys, get to watch all the games alongside, cheer all the members, although I know who's gonna win this because it's me talking to myself in the future, but talking to myself in the past as well. I think it's very fitting for this game, but I wanna thank you all for tuning in. If you enjoy today's content and you're excited for more, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, whatever you can do on YouTube. We're still learning here. And we'll, we're excited to see you guys next time. Next time we get together, it'll be on Saturday, which will be tomorrow, around 9 a.m. Pacific Center time, where the next three games we'll, we'll be posting on our Discord. 
can also join in on the community on our Discord, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, wherever social media, we're probably on it. You can see that into the comment section below. But guys, thank you, and girls, thank you all so much for tuning in and hope you have a wonderful night.